the game is embers adrift and this video is going to be about the game what i've discovered so far i've purchased it and played it for eh, a little bit over a week now it's been out for maybe a month month and a half it's been in beta for a very long time it's a decent game i'll just say that right now i like it i've been enjoying it it has its pros it has its cons it's not going to be for everybody there's a lot of videos out there that you can watch but i don't feel like any of them captured the right description what is this game people watch those videos i've watched those videos i still didn't though uh, i was on the fence about buying it for about a week i went ahead and pulled the trigger and i'm going to tell you what i've experienced and if you're interested i'm also going to do some tips some tricks a little bit of kind of what to expect going if you're going into this kind of help you get started so follow me and let's get started So what you're going to see in the background here is I just joined a group. We gathered up at a little town, a little encampment that you can repair and has a little uh, place to put your stuff and sell your stuff. So we're doing that and real close to that is a place called Exiles where we, we can go kill some exiles, like bandits basically. There's a lot of quests up there. It's a good place to grind in your teens. So that's just paint the picture for what's going on here uh, that you're going to be watching while I talk to you. Now the structure of this video, or at least I'm going to try to structure it, is no spoilers in the beginning. You know, nothing nothing big. I just want to tell you about the game uh, as best I can so you can kind of make the decision. Do you, is, it, is, is it a game you might like or is it a game you want to pass on? Uh, I like the game personally because I like this type of game, but there are pros and cons to it. So I'm going to get into that, and then after that I'll get into the spoilers. So... Uh, I'm going to timestamp everything as usual, so make sure you check the descriptions. I think YouTube calls them chapters now. Um, so check the chapters, make sure you're looking, don't miss anything. I, I timestamp the heck out of everything, so you can just jump around, look at what you want. But look at all these people, right? There's just groups, multiple groups of people in this camp. Um, a lot of people, a lot of activity, a lot of groups going on, and that's what I like about it. So, um, the game. What is it? This game is a sandbox MMO, right? It's not a Quest Hub WoW type game. It's an MMO, massive, massively multiplayer online game. Um, it costs $40. You get one month free with that $40. And then right now it's $10 a month. Uh, and then it will raise in 2023 to $15 a month. If you maintain your subscription, it'll always be $10, though. If you can get in now, before 2023, and maintain your subscription, it'll always be $10. So, nice little bonus there. I missed the game when it was $30 on sale. For the first month, it was $30 on sale. I missed that, so I had to pay the extra 10 I didn't know about this game. Um, so, anyway, basically, this is an old-school... Like, if you liked old school EverQuest, or I, I want to say Dark Age of Camelot, but the PvE style of Dark Age of Camelot, there is no PvP in this game, which to me, I love. Everything's PvP, you gotta worry about PvP balancing. I don't wanna, I just want a PvE co op, and that's what this game is. It's a PvE co op MMO. Uh, it's designed old school, so like you can see here, this is a one chevron see little green up arrow so this is a green easy mob that is the easiest type it's one one little up arrow um two is more like group content and you can see how difficult it is to fight them the whole group is whacking away at it so ones are solo content twos are like uh you know if you got a real tough character you can solo them um, and threes are like group content and obviously the harder they are the more experience you get so in a group you want to grind twos and threes but that's basically the gist of the game um, it's very I would say it's very EverQuest like in the fact that it just, it just drops you in the world and you don't know what to do you can go kill some rats like like you could never quest except here it's like deers and bears and stuff like that you kill it first um, there are quests in the game, but not a lot, which I like. Um, actually, I kind of feel like there might be too many quests. I like few quests in games like this. I like real sandbox, but the quests are... Uh, they give good item rewards, better than you can find in drops. But it does give any experience. So, 
it's mostly just like your first night playing this game is going to be just learning the game, exploring a little bit, killing some stuff, trying to level up, trying to figure it out, trying not to die like a noob. Just like in EverQuest. That's going to be your first night's experience when you buy this game. You might not even make it to level 2 depending on how you play. Um, my second character that I rolled, I was able to get like level 4 in one night. So a night for me as I get off work eat dinner with the family, and then when I get my few hours of, uh, you know, my time, if I get some game time, then that's a night for me. So three, four hours, you might be able to get a couple levels. Uh, I think it took me a couple days to get up to, like, level four-ish. At that point, people started inviting me for groups. Now, as you can see, it was nighttime. Now it's turning dawn. Unfortunately, you won't get to see the day for that long. Um... We're gonna we're about to go into a dungeon. This dungeon is called CV2 Central Vein Part 2 Exiles, because there's Central Vein Part 2 Spiders. So basically all the dungeons in the beginning are all linked. Um, and I'll get into that later. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but I'm just kinda telling you what's going on here as I'm talking about the game. So if this slow pace, what you're seeing here, see that's a three chevron blue exile, so. You know, just like EverQuest, greens are easy, barely give experience, blues are ideal, yellows are tough, reds are hard. So you want to fight uh, blues, oh, I'm sorry, and whites are even con. So blues, whites, and yellows in the game is what you want to fight. Um, as, as you see right there, there's a quest log, but again, I'll get into that later. So that's it. This is, this is a game of slow-paced combat. There's no magic, it's low fantasy, everybody has weapons, so I'm a damage doer, we have a tank, and we have some healers, so the guy with the little flag is a healer. Um, the heal isn't like spells per se, it has a very close range, and even the healer is doing melee, melee damage. Melee damage, sorry. I always say melee. I learned that word from reading when I was a teenager, and I always pronounced it melee. <laughs> I know it's melee, but... I've almost given up on trying to crack myself on that, so. Um, so yeah, this is this is basically it. You can just sit here and grind uh, in, in, in this fashion. You can do dungeon runs, you can do dungeon crawls, you can find a camp and grind in it. But this is it. This is the, this is the majority of the game. So if you want a social game where you're not going to, I mean, you can solo, but it's less efficient than grouping, and you're not going to get any good loot. And all the good name dropper, all the names that drop loot uh, are difficult. You're not going to be soloing them, so you're going to want to have a group for them. You can find a name and say, hey, I see a name. Can, who wants to group up and kill it? And you can usually pull a group together real fast to kill it or something. The names are just like EverQuest. Um, they're rare. Uh, some have placeholders, meaning if you go to a certain area and kill the mobs in that area, you have a chance for that name to drop to, to pop up when it respawns um the name doesn't always drop loot so it's, it's random it has like a random loot table just like everquest in the open world and stuff like that you might have an area it's not necessarily a placeholder but like a percentage chance like if you're killing fireflies um it might be a percentage chance where the named firefly pops up and he has a certain loot table i think this a sword is what everybody likes from him but it's very EverQuest-like, so if you like that rare mob, name mobs, drops loot, stuff like that, um, you'll like this kind of game. As you can see, the graphics aren't the best. Um, that's one of the cons. I mean, it looks okay. It looks pretty decent. Um, it runs horribly. <laughs> it's very unoptimized. Um, I get 30 frames per second max. I actually cap it at 30 frames per second i'll get into the settings and stuff like that later in the tips and trips tips and tricks but it doesn't run well it's poorly optimized the dungeons while they're large and expansive are not very unique so as you can see everything's just the same color like i would paint the ground different colors it's like i still think they're working on this it's just all bland and one color but it looks cool it's very dark in dungeons. You have to have a torch. You have to have a lantern, which is, I like that. That's cool. Um, but this is the game. Uh, it's it's just very social and grouping, and you can do a little bit of solo grinding. A lot of people will do that. 
But I really feel like they're missing the point of this game. This game is more for fighting a bunch of people and just kind of grinding stuff, stuff out, do some quests together, do some runs that are going to net you experience or loot, where a lot of people just do like laps around the dungeons looking for names and stuff like that. Um, but that is the point of the game. It takes a very long time to level. Um, it's, it'll take you a month to get, like if you're playing pretty hardcore, it'll take you roughly a month to get to max level. Max level, I think, is 50, but the actual max level right now is like 30. I don't think they have the 30 to 50 range flushed out yet, right? They're still kind of developing it. I would actually say, even though this game's released, mechanically it works. It's I, it's still like alpha, or not alpha stage, like beta stage almost, right? But it works. It's fully functional. The server's live. Everything's itemized. All the skills are in there. But they're still going to tweak and change things. They're going to change the classes around. They're going to tweak the skills. They're going to add new dungeons. They're going to add new maps. They're going to tweak the mobs. So it's still very... I, I would consider it like a like a live beta, basically. Like seven days to die, right? It's it's live. It's active. You can buy the game. But they're constantly working on it, changing things around. I think the same thing is going to be here. But it's, it's a persistent server, and it's good to go. So I don't really know... <laughs> What more to tell you? Uh, the pros, social game, no PvP. I think the subscription's actually a pro to me. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like subscriptions, but honestly, it keeps the free-to-play scrubs out, in my opinion. Yeah, people are just looking for like a, a game to jizz on for a couple months and trash it and then move on. It, it, you know, you're only paying money if you care. You're, you're only paying money if you're really interested in these types of games. So what you have is a community that's really interested in this type of game. So if this type of game interests you, you're going to be with like-minded folks. Now, there are some disappointed people that get in here and they're like, Ah, it needs more quests. It needs to be more like WoW and yada, yada, yada. But, uh, you know, this game is niche. It is what it is, and it kind of fits that market. Um... What else? Yes, yeah, so the community is great. Juggalo right there, that dude that's on the screen right now. When we started this group, he was like, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do a quest. Uh, do you have the quest? And I was like, no, nah, I don't think I ever got that. He was like, well, come on, run to me. He's like, they all waited while I ran up, and he hung out, and he waited in the area in town where the quest was. I ran over there. It was someplace I'd never been before. Got the quest, ran back to the group, and we were like, yo, thanks for waiting. Everybody was like, no problem, you know? And we went on and did our thing. So it's not fast paced. If you're looking to jump into a group with a looking for group finder and port to the instance and run it in 20 minutes, this is not the game for you. It's, you know, it took us 20 minutes just to gather up, get the group formed, gather up, me to go get the quest meet at that camp and then it took us another you know we ran it for an hour or two you know so this is definitely more old school takes longer slower pace and the community again going back to that point they're older a lot of these people have been around a lot of these people are in their 40s their 50s their 60s they've played everquest they're you know they're old school gamers which is pretty cool um you know i think that's cool some people might not so again i'm just trying to tell you what the game is, what I like about it, it might not be what you like, and that's fine. But this definitely is a EverQuest Pantheon type of mindset game, and that's how they're designing it. And I think it's cool. I do, I do miss the high fantasy aspect of it a little bit, but also at the same time, it's kind of cool. Like the system where healers are like sitting there doing damage and they do pretty okay damage they're not like you know as much as a dps or maybe not even much as a tank using a two-hander but they're still doing valuable damage at the same time they're also healing um i'll get into like they got a cool targeting system that i think is uh i don't think i've ever seen it in a game before it's pretty intuitive and unique. they have a cool positioning system which i'll get into later so there's a lot of interesting design mechanics and features in this game that make it nice. And combat's slow and clunky. There's not a thousand abilities. If you look at my bar, number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five are my main main damage doers. I roughly have five buttons to push every 20 to 30 seconds. The rest of them are just like buffs for later, things like that. Everything's run off of stamina for healers, for melee, for tanks, 
Everything's run off of stamina, the blue bar, so that's your mana, right? There's no stamina for melee mana. It's like, so if, uh, if a healer uses their damage ability, that's going to take away from some of the stamina they have that they could use for heals. So they got to kind of figure out, do I want to just do auto attack or do I want to use my special attacks? Do I got enough stamina to spend on that? Or do I want to reserve it for later in case we get a couple ads? You know, so it's very EverQuest where you're, it's more tactical. And you're managing your resources. Um, you know, you're making decisions based on tactics of the situation. Now here, I just changed the clip, just liven up, so we're not always in a dark cave while I'm talking to you. This is a lower level camp. This is like the first, this area will probably be one of the first areas you group at either Central Veins East West or the ancient uh, bear camp. So we're just here trying to do a quest of trying to find the ancient bear. You gotta get him to spawn, you gotta kill a bunch of bears. It's a good place to grind, like level four plus. So around level four, level five, come here, grind it up with a group. It's a really great place, gives you some good loot. You can see they have a need the greed system on the rolls, so dice is need, the money's gold is greed, and X is pass. Um, if you notice, I'm not really clicking on them, I'm kind of, they're just disappearing. That's because I got them bound to my keys. You can set key binds for need, greed, and pass. Um, for the most part, the community is pretty good with that. When something drops, they need it if they need it, or they greed it if they don't. There have been some cases of ninja looters, um, where they're rolling need on, like, a warrior for a healer item. Um, thing is, though, it's a small community. It's a very small community. You might have probably three to five hundred active players on the server at one time. Um, so, you know, my general rule of thumb is 10% of the population plays at any given time. So if you have three to five hundred times that by 10, that's probably about how many active players there are. Maybe not active accounts. So you're looking at maybe three to five thousand active accounts, maybe. Um, so it's still small player base, and the whole point of that is your reputation matters. All these guys I've grouped with multiple times as I leveled up, you know? Like, I'll just, like, I'm horrible with names. I don't remember anybody, you know? Coming from that WoW mindset, you know, for so many years. Uh, but what I found myself fi finding is, like, I would group with these guys for a couple hours, and I would see them again a few days later, and I would freaking remember them. Uh, Droopy Eyelid, I remember him. You know, um, so like I've started like you start seeing people in chat all the time talking, um, and people will get a reputation. So reputation matters is my point. Man, I'm long-winded, aren't I? So anyway, um, we're we're in pretty deep into this video. I don't know if you have a good understanding yet of what this game is. I'm hoping just seeing some of this gameplay and me kind of explaining it to you will give you a good idea. Do you want to play a PvE co-op social game? That's grindy, takes a long time to level up. They have a trade um, a trade skill system that's very complex. I'll get into that a little bit. Uh, pretty much has everything you could want in an MMO. The downsides are it looks kind of crappy. Animations are kind of meh. It looks kind of aged. It's not optimized. It doesn't run great. Um, but if gameplay is what matters to you, you know, that the mechanics of the game, um, you'll, you'll probably like this game. It's, it's probably for you. And if any of the points I made in the last, I don't know, what are we at, 20 minutes or something into the, into the video now? If any of the points I've made about the game sound interesting to you, then you should probably pull the trigger and spend the 40 bucks, because it's 40 bucks. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. I think you can request a refund. There's no, like, push button for refund. But I think you can, like, in the... In the Discord, contact the devs and say, hey, you know, I tried the game out. I really don't like it. I want to refund. I think they'll do it. I'm not sure. Um, when I bought the game, I, I I started searching for that information because I wanted a refund. I was like, ugh, it's so unoptimized. It's just so grindy. But, I, you know, I said to myself, you know what? Let me just push through. And I pushed through to, like, level 3 or level 4. And boom, it happened. I pushed through the boring part of learning the game. I was frustrated. I got lost. I didn't know where I was because the map system is just a map. It doesn't. There's no compass, so it's very old school. You have to keep track of where you are in your head, which makes you learn the zone, which means now you know all these little parts of the zone. And 
you know, some people know details that other people don't, so it just has that whole thing to it. There's no online resource, so what you know is what you know, and what you share with other people is what they know. So I, it started, like, really building on me. I think when I hit this bear group here, when you hit that first group and you have your first night where you're like, ah, oh, okay, and you're chatting and you're having fun, um, that's when it hits you. So my advice is if you do buy this game, at the very minimum, try to get to level 6 uh, to get your class, your, your base class, or your advanced class, or whatever, your subclass, whatever it's called. Uh, but I would really recommend to get in at least 10. I think by level 10, you'll have a good understanding of the base mechanics of the game, the grouping, and stuff like that. You'll have a, a better understanding of how the mapping system works. You'll have a better understanding of your abilities and how they work, the positioning system and how it works. Um, and if you're reading chat, we're just going on about soup. <laughs> Guy, the guy's from Japan, and he's ordering McDonald's. I want to strangle him. I want to strangle him. He's in Japan. He's eating McDonald's. What? You got the ramen. You got the ramen. Eat it. You got all the you got all the best foods that like we we got to struggle to find a good place that has that here. And you got it. <laughs> anyway, just joking around. It was just funny. I'm like, what are you eating good in Japan? McDonald's. <laughs> just cracking me up. Anyway, um, so yeah, if if this if this is your cup of tea buy it try it if not pass on it hard pass on it if you like wow you want like instant access you you don't like these slower games completely understandable they're not for everybody i like these kind of games when i heard about this game i was like oh my god this is checking off all the boxes that i like but i was on the fence i literally researched it for a week i was just sitting there i went onto the discord and just read the discord checked out other videos like i was really on the fence about buying it and then when i did buy it again like i said i was thinking about a refund for the first couple of days and then i just kind of pushed through it now i'm like in love with it i'm like oh man it's really good i don't know what the end game's going to be like i haven't made it there yet it takes a long time so a lot of people they they're, they're saying they get to like 30 and they're just grinding and they get tired of it and they leave or whatever i don't know but already i feel like it's worth it to me and i'm not there yet Maybe in a month from now, I'll get bored of it and move to something else. But even if I do, I think this will be a game I come back to as it develops. Um, but all, I'm, I, I really like the game so far. It's really scratching that itch that no other game in the world can scratch, except for maybe like an EverQuest TLP for me. All right, so oof, 20 minutes of that. I, I don't know what else to say. I, I, I'm already repeating myself. Now let's get into some helpful information. If you're thinking about getting a game, or maybe you already got the game, you just want to know what's going on, or maybe you're still thinking about buying a game, and you don't mind a little bit of spoilers, you're, you're not down with figuring everything out yourself, let's get into that. Let's get into some, what, what, what do you do, what are some tips, what's going on, so let's talk about that. My character's created, so I can't really go into the character creation screen right now, but... I figured this Amber's Adrift guide website that somebody put up would be a good spot to kind of review character creation. When you make a character, boy, girl, do you want to be fat, muscular, skinny, some stupid haircuts that don't even matter, some face tattoos. Other than that, it's very basic. The great thing about character creation is you can come back to it at any time, right? You can you can you know make your character and then change his appearance fully anytime you want free of charge. You can edit your character. However, you could be fat one day and skinny the next. So, uh, what really matters when you create a character is you pick your class, your your base class. And there's three base classes, and you can't change. Well, actually, you can change this, but it resets you all the way down to level one. So you're better off just rolling a character, and you can only have three characters per account. So what most people do is they make a defender, a striker, and a supporter, right? And then each of your base class, so tank, oops, sorry, tank is defender, striker is DPS, supporter is your healer. And then each base class, which is here, has three subclasses. And you can switch out these subclasses at a cost. I'll get into that in a second. So the tank has a juggernaut, a knight, and a marshal. The um, 
Striker, which is the DPS, has Berserker, Brigand, and Warden. The Supporter, which is your Medic, your Healer, has Duelist, Sentinel, and Warlord. And I'll, I'll go into what each class is before all this. So um, Now, I just want to say, so if you pick a Duelist, you can respec into a Sentinel at any time you want. I think it's free of charge. What happens, though, so this is your base class, right? So this is supporter, right? These four abilities, all supporters get. So when you're level one, you get this. Level one, you get that. Level two, you get that. Level four, you get that. You keep those. That's your base class four abilities. Once you pick your subclass, or whatever you want to call it, you start in with your other abilities. So this is your abilities up to level 30. So you only get eight more abilities. So, again, it's not a game where you have a ton of buttons and abilities, you will fill up your bar. You won't be able to have all this stuff on your bar. So you will have to kind of pick and choose what you want on your bar. So that's kind of how it works. So when you reset, so let's say I'm a Sentinel, and I want, or I'm a Duelist, and I want to be a Sentinel. Let's say I'm level 14, right? So you have two levels. That's what a lot of people don't realize. You have your supporter level. And you have your subclass level. It's all kind of rolled into one at first. So when you're on your first character, you're a supporter, you're a duelist, you're level 14. You're level 14 supporter, level 14 duelist. If you reset duelist because you want to become a sentinel, you'll get reset. Your subclass will get reset all the way back to six. So basically what you do is you lose your abilities. But your supporter class will still be at 14. So basically, so what that means is the the gist of it is you can use your level well let's let's say level fifty because the items go uh, zero five ten fifteen twenty every five levels you get new you can have new sets of items so there you know every five levels is is where the itemization is but in this example we're using fourteen so. You're level 14, your abilities got reset to 6 when you swapped, but you can still use your level 10 weapons, your level 10 gear, and all that stuff. You can still group with level uh, level 14s. So, actually, grouping don't matter now I'm, now I'm talking. Group, you can group with a level 30 at level 1 and still get the same experience. But people will see you as, I think, I'm not 100% on this, people will see you as level 14 even though in reality you're level 6, you don't have this ability, this ability, and this ability. So then the XP for your subclass comes back faster, so it's not the same sludge of a grind, because you're fighting higher level mobs, so it comes back faster, but it's not super fast. So what I heard is like a guy respect at 16, and it wasn't until level 21, like his supporter class wasn't until like level 21, 22, before this called up to it, right? So his supporter class was t like 21 before his subclass finally caught back up. So, you know, the earlier you swap, the less of a hassle it is. If you get to 30 and you want to swap, you might just be better off re-rolling a character entirely. And if you want to swap um, to a whole different base class, it's going to reset everything down to one. It's going to reset your base class skill down to one when you reset. So I don't that at that point you're definitely better re-rolling. Um, but what a lot of like I said, what a lot of people do is defender, striker, supporter, and then they pick one of the three subclasses and they'll worry about if they want to re-roll later. Um, so that's kind of how the classes work out. Uh, I don't want to get into crafting real quick, but just because it's here, crafting works the same way. You have three subsets, so you have gathering, blacksmithing, and bushcraft. Um. Uh, da, 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 da. So gathering has three, right? So you can gather wood, you can skin monsters that you kill, or you can mine ore. There are your three gathering professions. Those three gathering professions feed these two um, uh, blacksmithing and bushcrafting. So within blacksmithing, you can make like metal armors and shields and stuff like that. Uh, weaponsmith, you can make all the all this uh, melee kind of weapons. These are like tank weapons and DPS weapons. And you can do jewelry, which includes dagger, which is a DPS weapon. Throwing knives, which is a pulling weapon for tanks. You know, you, all your different stuff. Jewelry, belts. 
Uh, bushcraft, same thing. So you have your primary and then three subcategories. So this is your arrows, your crossbows, bolts, staves for healers, um, your leather armor and cloth armors uh, for outfitter. And then provisioner, you can make the gathering tools, potions, consumables, food, which gives regen, healing pots, repair kits, uh, tea as well. This doesn't encompass, oh, here's tea. I don't think this encompasses everything right now. Uh, tea gives you, like, stamina regen, food gives you health regen, ground torches, you can craft them, uh, which would be nice because I try to loot them all the time. Uh, it's a very dark game at night. It's night. And as you've seen in the other videos, um, in the tunnels, you need a torch or you can't see. You're fighting in the dark a lot of times. So when you're fighting or sitting, meditating, or whatever you want to call it, you can't have your light source out. What, so what they have in place of that is a ground torch. You put it on the ground and it lights up the area. Plain and simple. It lasts for like 5 or 10 minutes or something like that. So it's a consumable item that's not super important. You can fight in the dark. But a lot of people like to have ground torches down just so you can kind of see what's going on. The night, the dark night, the light dark system, kind of irritating at first, but then um, then you get used to it. And you start liking it. I'll talk about this guy later up in the sky. This is this is like a big planetary moon that's always in the sky in the northern position. You can use it as a compass. They call it Blupiter. I guess I just talked about it now, but I'll go over it later again. I think. Um, <clears throat> So let me describe the classes, because this is the hardest part when you're building. What do you want? So first thing you need to ask yourself, do you want to be a tank? Do you want to be a DPS? Or do you want to be a healer? Now, all of them are needed. I would say the ideal group for me, like the, the typical XP group without getting into anything weird, like an AoE group or something like that. I would say you want one tank to, man it, to tank the mobs. You want... So you got six people. So you got five left. You want three DPSers and two supports is what you want. Um, you can have two tanks, two DPS, two supporters. You can have two tanks, three DPS, one supporter. But ideally, I think one tank is good enough to cover everything. If you got a lot of DPSs, you're going to start knocking stuff out. And if you got two supporters, you're going to be able to keep the group alive even when you run into problems. Better understanding of kind of how the group functions a little bit, the the roles between it, uh, you know, the differences between the different roles, six players, so group. Let's go into the differences about the subclasses. So which subclass should you pick? That's going to be something you're going to have to do some research on. I'm going to help you out, tell you what I've learned so far. Um, but what I say isn't the end-all, be-all. I don't have... All the knowledge. I only have what I know, so I'll try to share that with you a little bit. Uh, first thing, this website isn't 100% accurate as far as the abilities. Also, these abilities, if you look, they scale up as you level, and nothing tells you how they scale up. So what they are now, they might be better or worse later on. Um, but let's go through the defenders, right? So Marshall, or Juggernaut. Let's start with Juggernaut. Let me see. Let me see if I remember... I don't really know too much about the Juggernaut, but just looking at his abilities, right? So he's got a defensive, he's got a point-blank AoE that gives threat. So that's nice, it's doing AoE damage, it's giving threat. He's got a buff to resilience, heals when taking fatal. So resilience is a stat that is like, when you're going to die instead of dying, you kind of don't die and you heal a little bit. Um, and it's a chance to, so it gives you a higher chance to... Uh, live if you're going to die. I think this is this is your oh crap button. So you get an oh crap button. Uh, another AoE. Uh, in order, da, 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 da. So you got to look at it like, so I'll explain this to you real quick. So it's weapon damage. Your weapon's often like a D&D &D roll. So it's like a 2d4. So two, uh, you roll two dice with a maximum of four. So it could be two ones, which is two. It could be Two fours, which is eight, so it would have a range of eight to two, or two to eight damage potentially, and then a weapon will potentially have like a plus damage modifier, so it adds like three or four or five, so you always get some type of base damage on top of that. So this does your weapon damage plus 16, and then times that by 80% to health. So I'm assuming this does weapon damage plus 16, 
and then another 80% on top of that ignores defenses. So that's kind of how you can read this, and that gives a brief description. Um, so, and then he gets Unstoppable, which gives you a resistance buff. So 100% resistance to m uh, movement, stun, physical diva. So you're just resistant to any kind of CC effect. Uh, perforate is like, like a dot brace. So this just looks like a, a general all-around tank with some AoE. Pretty, pretty good amount of AoE. The knight, what I know about him is he is the most tanky of the tank. He has a lot of single target, uh, uh, skills, right? So, um, forced aggro, uh, let's see, plus damage to resist, so that's a buff. This is another buff, activate your defense. This is a damage with a 250% threat modifier to help you maintain your threat. Uh, another resistance buff, so he's, he's real tanky, he's got all these buffs, right? Um, what's this? This is 500% threat, so another more get keeping your threat maintained um threat can be pulled from a good dps if you're not a good enough tank you can find yourself constantly fighting for threat so um these types of abilities like it looks like to me the tank has really good single target threat doesn't have very good aoe threat like this guy has right so he does 250 percent not 500 but he's doing it to six targets around him so when you get these times where like four, five, six little one chevron rats come at you, you know, you can hit that, boom, you hit them all with 250% threat, they're all on you, instead of when your healer drops a heal bomb on you, all of a sudden, you know, five of the six rats run to your healer and destroy them, so Juggernaut has some good AoE uh, taunting, Back, let's go back to the knight, knight has a lot of single target, defensive, and then even has a self heal, which is crazy for a tank to have a self heal. Um, tanks, I don't know what they are, but each subclass tank have different armor levels. Um, real quick on armor, how that's done, I'll show you later, is the you have a weight limit for armor, and you got to mix and match your armor pieces based on the available weight, right? So you might have 50 weight, and uh, this piece is 10, this piece is 20, and they have different AC verse, uh, versus the weight. I think like a 2 to 1 ratio is standard starting out. But they do have slight differences. I think the tank has the most weight, so it can technically get the most AC, the most armor class, which is damage mitigation, than the other two. A lot of people go tank. I think that's one of the higher choices. Uh, but they're all pretty balanced. I didn't see a lot of uh, too much discrepancies. And tank is a very popular class in general, I think, just because the mitigation means a lot in this game. Um, so I think they're some of the, not, not, they're not the best soloers. Like they could take like higher targets just because of their mitigation. Now the Marshall, this is probably one I would pick. I like the way the skills are laid out, but, uh, so the Marshall has some, uh, CC, which none of the other tanks get. You see, none of these have CC. It's just buffs and damage, buffs, debuffs and damage. This guy actually has a CC. He's the only one in the tank that could do that. And I like that. This is a root. This is an AoE root. Small radius. So only things kind of within a normal, you know, range of you. But you root them for 18 seconds. And it has a 20 second cooldown. So you can pretty much keep refreshing it. As long as this information is correct. I don't know. It doesn't stop archers and stuff like that. But this this will be very handy for when, if you're pooling... Or you get a lot of ads and you just want to CC them. You don't maybe you don't have a brigand, which I'll get into later. I really like the marshal for that reason, and maybe it's a stupid reason, but uh, for me, I like it. And then he, let's see, he's got a uh, he's got an attack. He's got a small threat, debuff movement, so it allows you to move quicker. Uh, he can do AOE to three targets. His small parry. And I don't know a lot about tanks, so that's why I'm reading these. Um, I haven't really picked a tank role to play. I played healer and DPS mostly. Um, actually, just looking at this, one thing I see is he doesn't have a lot of threat. He has, a, at level 30, he has a point-blank AoE that does four targets. Uh, forced aggro, so and with a large radius and for eight seconds. 
So, like, you can cast that every 20 seconds. That's pretty strong. But you got to wait until 30 to have that. And then he has a resistant, elemental resistant buff. So I kind of almost see him in combat negative 35. Buff to movement and combat for 50. So this is actually a run speed buff, and it negates their movement. So it snares them for 15 seconds and increases. So he's got a lot of CC. Not a whole lot of damage. Some some defenses. Oh, he's got a buff to haste, which is nice. That's nice, but it's on two minute cooldown. So this guy's less tanky out of these two, right? So I think this guy's more of a CC DPS. I don't know. That's what it looks like to me. I think Knight is the more single target. Like if there's going to be a boss raid later on, the Knight's going to be like if you want to make it equivalent. This is your Shadow Knight, the Marshal. This is your warrior. He's going to be your raid tank. And Juggernaut's going to be like your secondary tank or your second best tank. That's what it looks like to me. I could be wrong. Hopefully I'm right. Let's go on to DPS. I know a little bit more about DPS. <laughs> Thoroughly examined DPS. Um, so Berserker is more of an AoE DPSer. Full DPS. He doesn't have a lot of debuffs. He has some buffs. To focus on auto target. So a berserker kind of to me is like blow all your abilities and then throw fury up and do auto attack damage for, you know, increased damage is kind of how the berserker will play. You don't get any CC. If something chases you down, you either got to kill it or die. You can't fear it. You can't stun it. Nothing. So this is like your pure DPS it has a defensive buff, which looks nice later on. So this is your pure DPS class. He's AoE can potentially be a problem in groups. So let's look at it real quick, right? So he's got your standard just hit, right, damage. He's got a point blank AoE. Oh my god, it's 360 degrees. Yeah, so that, that makes sense, point blank AoE, duh. Uh, but it's just normal damage to three targets. So he could potentially be pulling aggro off tanks if he hits that too soon. He could be breaking CC with this. Um, it could be an issue. Um, this one gives a plus 50 to haste, melee damage, range damage for 20 seconds. But you can't use any skills, which that's what dazed. So it's saying you're dazed. There's a skill called dazed, which blocks monsters from using their skills. So you, you get a 50% bonus to everything, but you can't use any of your skills, which basically means your auto attack is bonus. So you get haste, melee, ranged, buff. Uh, so you can auto attack, and it has a long cooldown every a minute and a half. Uh, Intimidate, this is nice. This is a law, so this is like a druid law from EverQuest. Um, you know, it reduces their aggro radius, so you can walk by them or pull mobs. This is the only AoE law, so this is good. Problem is, it's point blank. So, I mean, 15 meters is, I don't know if that's accurate. But that's roughly the same law that a warden gets when he kind of uses his to pull from a distance. His is a single target. So I guess you would probably use this, like, if you're pulling on this guy, it's going to be more difficult. You have a higher chance of accidentally aggroing mobs and bringing them all back with you. Um, but I would imagine you kind of run in and start casting this when you think you're about 15 meters away. Hopefully it lands on all of them and then you can pull. So I don't think they're the best poolers, but it's definitely an interesting skill. If they increase this to 20, I think that would be fine for pooling. Because a bow only goes, like a long bow is only like 24, 26 meters. So it's almost as long as you can potentially pool with a bow anyway. Uh, but interesting skill. Let's see, what do we got? Attack, weapon damage, blah, blah, blah. that's just a normal weapon damage thing. Uh, point blank AOE for two targets. Damage your weapon. So that's just another little AOE. This is nice. Increases your defense by 50% for 20 seconds with a one minute cooldown. That's not bad. Uh, wind up. 50% melee damage range for 20 seconds. Lasts for one hit. So this is like a one hit wonder, right? So you're going to want to pop this probably with your most damaging ability right so you're going to hit that and then probably whatever this is uh point blank aoe five targets 24 health 
Yeah, so this is probably your biggest damage doer, and it's AoE, so you're probably going to pop Wind Up, and then pop your Wild Strike, hit for as much as you can, blow that, blow that. Once you're out of stamina, you don't care, you just want to regen stamina with Auto Attack, blow your Fury, regen stamina for 20 seconds while you're doing 50% more damage with your me. That's probably how he plays out. So this guy lacks CC or anything like fear or anything that's going to help you once the monster's already on you. But it looks like he's your pure damage doer. Um, Brigand. Very nice class in my opinion. Um, what makes them nice is the CC. Now I started a Warden because I really liked Lay the Land and I liked the dots. Uh, I like the damage shield that the Warden gets. Then when I started playing the Warden, Warden in groups and I seen the Brigands come into play, I got jealous very quickly. The uh, reason why I did is the CC is just remarkable. So they have, at level 6, their first ability they get is a stun. So it's a 17 second cooldown and an 18 second stun. So you can keep something stun locked almost. There will be like a, if you're perfect, there will be a 1 second break. So you are you can keep one mob locked down permanently. So when your group pulls three, you're taking one of them out of the picture while you handle the other two. You get two wardens in a group as your DPSers, you're now taking two of those three out of the picture. You're you're pretty you're you're golden when you get you're just like when you get a brigand in a group who CC in, you're just like, Oh thank God. <laughs> really maybe like I was like, Oh I wanna re roll a, a brig. Um and I think they're good DPSers. I don't mean to talk this class up so much, but they're the only one with a reliable crowd control like this. And then it gets even better with these other crowd controls. They have decent single target damage abilities, right? Um, and then this is the daze. It just prevents them from using uh, abilities. And this is the other CC. So this would be your backup CC. So then you get a C, you get a, crowd control that's on a one minute cooldown and it's point blank AOE. So this is for when, okay, so now you got a whole bunch of targets coming in. Boom! You daze them all for 15 seconds while your tank gets organized. They're not bum-rushing your healers. And then you follow that up. Hit them once they break. Hit them with your stun. You can pick which one you want. And you got one out of the picture. So definitely a very rigid CC class. I do like that. Um, and they have good damage here, and then when they get higher level, they get this execute, which I was talking to some high level brigs. They said this thing is the bomb because the tooltip doesn't really. It says it does a lot of damage, so it does plus twenty, and then one point one times, which is one hundred and ten percent. But then it deals more damage the closer to death they are. So you hit them when they're like thirty or twenty five percent, like a warrior execute, and wow, and it does it just smacks them down. But then at thirty. They get this on top of it. So it's like, you know, this is like your backstab or from the shadows. It gives you 200 to hit, which allows you, I think hit is, I got to double check the stats. I don't want to say inaccurately, but I think his hit is bypasses armor. Um, oh, no, hits your critical. Yeah, yeah, hits your critical. So it gives you 200 hits, which increases your chance to hit for one hit. So this is like your backstab. So when you're level 30, you're going to pop that. And then pop that. And then, pop, wow, you're going to just jam them. Um, so, very bursty DPS when they're dead. They're like a finisher. They got solid DPS here while they're leveling. Because you'll probably be using your dot, your overpower. Uh, that's a buff. Uh, oh, your hidden strike. So, you're going to be using hidden strike, which is solid. You're going to be using this, which is normal. It's, a, it's like a normal DPS. And you're going to be using your bleed. Those are going to be three primary abilities as you're leveling up until you get to 26. So you don't have a whole lot of DPS abilities, but you don't you only need like three or four of them anyway. You need three or four DPS, and you also have fading strike. So you'll probably you'll probably have advantage strike, fading strike, bleeding strike, hidden strike, and overpower will be your five abilities. Out of those, you'll probably remove advantage strike, uh, which is a plus 10. That's a plus 14. Yeah, so I mean, you have plenty of standard DPS until you get to here, but it's not like the Berserker that has just tons of DPS options. Well, actually, they got, so they'll have Strike, Fate, it'll have Advantage, Strike, Bleeding Shot, Assault, Arc, 
pummel and wind strike. So it's roughly the same. All right. I don't mean to talk up very. I just really like the idea of their crowd control. Oh, one thing I didn't mention with Berserkers is there people do get, from what I've heard, people can get AOE groups together, and the XP is pretty good if you do it right. So you gotta have like, think of EverQuest. You gotta have like the perfect group with people that know what they're doing, know where to go. If you get that, you can put an AOE group together and AOE XP. So in a group, but I've never done that. I'd imagine it's complex to get together. You probably have to have a pre-made or something like that. Um, Warden, I hear, can be one of the top DPSers. Um, they focus on dots. So very much like your bleeding strike, which is damage over time. It hits them, plus does damage over time. Everything. Venom strike is damage over time. Uh, this one's not. This is just a normal. Uh, this is a normal hit, your assist. But then it gives your defensive target a little buff which isn't much. This is probably one of your weaker abilities. They have a self-heal, which is great for soloing. You can kind of throw that on yourself and heal a little bit while your other stuff's on cooldown. It helps with downtime. Your stamina will come back a lot faster than your health. You throw this on yourself before you sit down and rest. It just makes your health come back faster. Sedation dart is your law, so that's going to be your pool. As you can see, it's 24 meters, so it's same. I think that's roughly the same as a longbow. So whatever you can reach with your bow, you can reach with a law. It's just it takes one out of the picture if there's two or three standing near each other that you can't separate and you're going to aggro if you pull them all. It just allows you to get... It's a form of CC. Uh, brig has other forms. So basically what you do is if you had a brig and a warden, you would send the warden out the pool and then the brig would take care of any of the ads coming into the camp. Um, lay to land. This is a uh, group AOE... Um, aura basically like think of it like the hunter run speed buff and this is the only run speed buff in the game other than like catching little random butterflies that give you like a 20% movement buff for 30 minutes so, that, so it's pretty nice to have that um, a lot of people will choose warden just for this because there's a lot of running in the games the zones are very huge and they also want to use them to gather so that you're running from resource node to resource node but in my opinion, like I've gotten this far, I've gotten to it. Fifteen percent is nice, um, but it's like it's only fifteen percent. What what is nice is Warden has no CC, they have no fear, they have no uh, stun. But what they do have is so like in this game, when a wolf aggro's you, even like a little green wolf, you'll get like a two chevron green wolf. He can kill you, right? But they run faster than default runs, so you can't outrun them they're going to be hitting you as you run and you're waiting for them to leash now they can leash but sometimes they can chase you halfway across the zone before they do sometimes it's fast sometimes it's slow i think it depends it feels like it depends on if they can catch you or not how far how fast they give up so if they're on your ass beating on you um you know they might stay with you for a while but when you have that little 15 percent movement it's just enough where pretty much nothing can catch you Nothing's going to catch it. It doesn't getting hit doesn't interrupt it. You can't have this in combat though. So if you turn around and pull your swords out and try to hit, it's going to remove your buff. But as long as you don't do that, if you just keep running, you don't have to worry about it. So that's kind of like the warden CC, I guess. <laughs> that's silly when they get. It's pretty nice, but I think a lot of people get suckered into the warden for this. Um, again, more dots or is this dot strike uh, weapon? On hit damage, sixteen to armor. So I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure what sixteen damage to armor means. I guess it lowers their armor over time. I'm not 100 percent sure. Eagle eyes a 20 to hit for 30 seconds, which is crit rate, and 20 is not a lot. So that that seems like a cheesy buff. I do know this is wrong. This cooldown is not one minute in game. This cooldown is like 25 seconds or. 35 seconds so you can potentially have this up always and it only costs five stamina so it's not that big of a cost so it's basically like if you want to use a slot an ability slot you'll you can have plus hit you know basically i don't think it's worth it it's probably one of the lesser used between assist and eagle i think these are two relatively trashy abilities then you get toxins um so it causes them to take damage when they attack, which is really nice for 10 hits. So, I mean, if you just look at this, 10 chemical damage to health on attack for 10 hits. 
they're going to do 10 hits within 40 seconds, 100% if they're active. So you're going to do 100 damage by default on this spell. That's a huge damage spell. That's like the Brigands, probably the Brigands execute, you know what I mean? On, on a dot spell where they're taking, it's like a reverse damage shield. And then on top of that, you do have a damage shield. So you can use this on your defensive target. Now, my only downside is defensive target usually means somebody else, not yourself. So I don't know. I'd have to check with this, but I doubt you could give yourself the damage shield while you're soloing. You probably have to be in a group. Um, but it's 20 second cooldown and lasts for 20 hits. So you basically will always be able to keep this damage shield up on your on your tank and you're just doing more damage so five melee five times ten is fifty five times twenty is a hundred so that's another hundred damage kind of passive skill just like that one while you're blasting them with acid strike and blasting them with venom strike and bleeding strike so very dot like one thing to remember for all abilities on all classes they also work with ranged damage. So you can use Venom Strike, Acid Strike, vape, vape, everything for every ability you can use on a bow. So keep that in mind. Now bows are tend to be less powerful than a melee weapon. And kiting isn't too optimal in this game, but keep that in mind. There's some stuff you can do there. Um, Alright, so that's the DPS classes. Let's get into the supporter classes and what I know about them. Um, let's go this way, because I know more about this one, this one, than I do this one. So, Warlord's a very popular support class, because basically it's a bard. Um, you have your basic heal, and your basic assault strike, and your basic defensive resist for your tank. Then, the Warlord gets a, uh, um, two health f for 30 seconds, so it's like a, a regen heal. And they, it does the whole group, which is very nice. And then they got a damage one. And then they do engine. Er, then they do basically your mana song, right? If you were a bard in EverQuest, it regens one stamina every six seconds. It costs five percent stamina. So you get it, you get a plus one from spending this, but your whole group gets plus six, right? So it doesn't cost you anything in the long run. You're getting that back plus one, but your whole group is regenerating stamina. More stamina means they can spam their abilities more. You can last longer fights. This is their defensive CC. Not too great in groups because it's a fear. It makes the monster run away. But this fear isn't like EverQuest fear or World of Warcraft fear where they just instantly run away and go aggro other mobs. They kind of like, they kind of look like they're really afraid of you. Like they kind of want to attack you, but they kind of crawl back a little bit and they act really weird. And then if you chase after them, they'll kind of move farther away from you so you can't get to them. It's really weird. I've seen this fear, fear do really weird things to monsters. And so, but it's not necessarily. Oh, look at that. Did they add that? I didn't even notice that. Is it on everything? Oh, look at that. It does give you the max level version of it. Have they always had that? I was just too retarded to know about it. All right, so anyway, when you come to the site, it gives you the minimum level, the maximum level. But So this does two heal, two health every four seconds, and then at max level, it does eight health every four seconds. So just keep that in mind. And that just increases the duration. Okay. Um, stifle, strike your target, and restrain their actions. Just gives them a slow, a very tiny slow, um, but still nice. Point blank AOE, uh, fear, um, a plus hit buff, which I don't probably wouldn't want to waste your stamina. It's only five stamina on that, but that's not that great. Um, another attack with some defense debuffs. Rallying call gives you haste. So I, to me, I think. You'll be using your heals, you'll be using rejuve, and energizing, and rally call. There's your, there's your three things. He, regen, mana regen, and haste, right? I think they're going to be your three main buffs that you're doing for your group. You're going to be wiggling in some DPS when you have extra stamina. And then you have a couple CCs at level 30. You get a point blank fear, so if things come at you. You can send them running. Now, what I do know about supports is they can solo heal a group fine, I think. 
um, if it gets too intense, you might not, you're not the strongest healer because you're relying on regens and, but you bring a lot to the table. So what a lot of groups, remember how I said you usually want two supports? What a lot of groups do is they'll run a duelist and a sentinel plus a warlord, right? Um, as they're, they'll try to get a warlord into the group and then another healer type that's like a primary healer. These auras or whatever you call them do not stack with other warlords which kind of sucks so i guess if you had two warlords you could be like i'll do rejuve you do energizing kind of thing like that but it kind of sucks that they don't stack uh sentinel is the highest ac defensive they have a little bit more weight than the other healers um and they're like the i think they're considered the i don't know if they're i would say they're the strongest healer but they're they're like your cleric, basically. I guess you could say that. So there's your bard healer, your cleric healer. And you know, at the end they get this um this one does forty seven health every fifteen seconds. I don't know why it says sixteen seconds. Um they get your basic, then they get a replenish, and then they get another at the end that's very strong. So they got three good heals and a very strong heal. They have uh, some buffs, debuffs, uh, fortifying buffs. Um, diversion is weird because so act. Um, I think you would do like fortifying aura, get damage resistance. Uh, maybe do is that prepare your armor? Yeah, give yourself a bolster armor, which gives you twenty five percent damage resist, and then you would throw your diversion, which is an enrage. It's a forced aggro on yourself. So this is a healer that can actually like in a pinch, grab the mob and become the tank, which is strange. So, very defensive healer, um, just because they have a lot of defensive buffs that they can cast on themselves, where other healers or other classes are like, this can only be casted on your defensive target, meaning like your tank or your other players. So, this is like your cleric, more more tanky. Very popular choice. Um, Duelist, I think their, their deal is they have AoEs. Uh, let's see, so that's a standard heal, that's a standard damage, that's a threat reduction, which is nice for a healer, because healers will get threat, they will take damage. Uh, so that's another damage doer. Buff serration for 40 seconds. Serrate your ally's weapon, oh, so it gives your ally a bleed, that's nice, for 40 seconds or 10 hits. Um... Oh, here, look at that AoE. They have a group heal. That is nice. That's a 2d2 plus 25. Um, so potentially 4 plus 25 to health. Doesn't really go up that much at 30, 27. Um, but that's nice. That's an AoE heal. So that puts them closer to the rejuve that the, the warlord has. So they have pretty good heals. Um, Solid healer, AoE heal, another DPS, and this is where they're nice. They have a stamina regen, so it gives them 50, it gives somebody half their stamina back, right? 50% uh, of their stamina back. Or, no, wait, I'm sorry, that's 50 to regen, so it increases their, whatever their regen is, by 50% is basically what's that, what that's doing for 20 seconds. So that really kind of... You got a tank who's running low on stamina, is having a hard time keeping aggro. You can throw it on him, throw it on a DPSer, throw it on another healer. Um, probably cannot throw it on yourself, though. But that's definitely nice. So, definitely a nice. I think all the healers are pretty well balanced. Warlord's popular because it's very bard like, so you're just twisting your abilities all the time. Um, yep, so that is the classes, I think. Um, and you can find this website, Embers of Drift Guide, in the Discord. It's just, it's, or you can just Google it. It's a, it's a pretty decent site. Uh, Alice Blue is the one who made this. Also, if you're signing up, I don't have any kind of like promo codes or anything for you, but I do know Alice Blue is a affiliate. She, she was like very happy about being in a, finally, after months and months of trying, she got her affiliate code. So now when you buy the game through her, she gets a cut of it or whatever. So if you appreciate this site or somebody putting it together, 
go into the Discord, look for Alice Blue, get her affiliate link, and then hook her up, I guess. Um, wish I had something for you guys. I don't, you know, I don't have anything to offer you or anything. But, um, all right, so let's talk about, well, we went over classes in detail. So let's talk about, uh, I guess let's talk about what you do when you get started. So, when you start, you start here. These little campfires here are ember campfires or ember fires. They're going to regen. When you die, you get take like a stamina hit, a health hit, and you'll see you'll it'll reduce by a certain percent. If you sit next to these fires, you'll regain it. First thing you got to know. This map will be uncovered, so just FYI, this is a spoiler. Skip this part if you don't want to see the map. Um, you'll uncover these little towers, things like this, these little markers as you bump into them. But this is basically, I have to show you this on a map. I can't show it to you in game. So when you start, you're going to start here, level one. You'll do a little, you'll talk to a guard. She'll tell you hit some dummies. Maybe you might get a little stupid quest or something like that. What you need to do at that point is just level up. All you got to do is level up. You can run around out here. You can run around out here. Just look for... Uh, bears, boars, deers, and such to kill that are either white or yellow. You should be able to kill yellows at this level. If you die, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, that's what you want to do. I would focus on deer first. Deer seem to have a better loot table for weapons. So you start out with training weapons but when, that are no drop. But when you kill an animal, and I think specifically deer... Can drop weapons and armor. Um, you'll want to do that first. Um, or I'm sorry. You'll want to kill them. Focus on them more. Don't go out of your way running. I don't see any deer over here. I'm going to run all the way over here. Looking for don't do that. If you see a deer. Make it priority. Otherwise kill the other stuff. Doesn't matter. If you're choosing a tank. And you see a bear. Kill the bears as well. Because they drop hormones. Or I'm sorry. They drop piss. They drop urine. And you use that for to enhance your abilities. So you have your abilities and you can use components to auto whenever you use the ability. It consumes one and it gives it like plus whatever bonus that makes it a little stronger. So definitely a nice boon to defensive characters to be able to kill bears and start getting that stuff early. Definitely focus on deers. Um, so you want to come around here. You can even come up to the second town. You'll find some maybe some quests starting in here. And you can run around out here. And I even if I find myself running around like up this way and up in here a lot of times too when I'm like level two or three. Um, but basically, I think the most important quest you'll find in this second town, in the second campfire, um, the apprentice quest you'll want to start. The apprentice quest will have you basically, if I remember correctly, it'll have you run over to here. And there's this little outpost over here full of monsters. You just have to kind of be in the area. It'll update and tell you to find Central Veins East. And then you run over here. This cave is Central Veins. It's a dungeon. And they all connect. Uh, I'll show you a map of that later. Um, but this is Central Veins East. This is Central Veins West. So then you go over here. You'll get that update. And then let me check my notes real quick. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I do have some notes I took down on that. And the reason why I'm going over this quest is this quest gives a really good reward at the end. It's very long. It takes you into the other zones. So let's see. Apprentice. Yeah, so you get it east to uh, to tick the two quest finds. So this one and this one. And then you go back to Bulgar at Hillgrid Farms. That's the second campfire here. And then you'll go to Hollick's Tower, which is here. And then there's two other NPCs here. You're going to want to pick up their quest. One's to like fill out the map, which I think gives you, depending on your class, it gives you something different. I think it gives you a belt with a plus stat that helps your class like regen or something like that. So it's pretty nice. You'll probably be wearing that all the way up into your teens. So the, the quests are definitely, I, w I would say they're pretty like must-dos, but it's not too, too whatever. But there's two quests here that you pick up while you're doing that. 
And then uh, you need something from CB West. Oh, you need the note, sketchbook, notepad, and backpack from CB West. So at that point, you should be around level 4, level 5, looking for a group. You should find one pretty easy. You're going to want to actually go into CB West, into the dungeon. There's statues in there. Let me see if I can pull up that map. One second. Let me go off screen here. Oh my god, I got so many windows open. Uh, Central Veins Dungeon. I don't know if this is the first one. Okay. Somebody made this map. Um, entrance from Exile Fort in Northreach. Uh, this is CV... Oh, uh, this is CV2. I'm sorry. This isn't the first map. There's another quest that has statues in here. See, so it says S for statue. And then you can go... In. So this is this is the next zone. They call it CV2, Central Veins 2. Spiders is like level 10. And then an Exile Fort's like level 15. So that's not what we want. Anyway, you'll go in here. There's three statues you have to find in there. You just go up to the statues. It'll complete the quest. Uh, basically saying you found a sketch. Uh, I think there's actually two statues and the backpack is like laying on the ground near one of the little, you'll walk past it as you go through the tunnel. Then you go deeper. Once you do that, you got to go deeper into West, uh, to find a cage. And I'll, I'll put, the um, I'll put a thing up in the video. Matter of fact, I'm going to give myself 10, a couple seconds here. I'm going to put the, uh, what the cage looks like here for you. I took a picture of it or whatever. Once you find that, then you can come back, return the quest to him, and then he sends you up to this area, which is the CV quest in here. So this is, I think this is CV1 or CV2 spiders, and then this is CV2 uh, exiles. Uh, in the video you seen earlier, this was the camp that we met up when I first started this video, if you watch that. Then we ran up in here into the exiles and started fighting them. The other part of the video, when I cut to the bear cave, there's another one called Ancient Bear that you're going to get in this area. He's up here. So the second where I was fighting before, when I was like level 4 or 5, talking about ramen noodles and stuff with a Japanese guy getting McDonald's, this is where we were. Um, there's another area over here. Oh, actually, here it is. So... Yeah, so you run here, it'll update, and I guess you run... I don't know, that's weird. Actually, you run here, and then over to here to update it. I don't know. I'm still learning the areas. Anyway, so you, by the time you're level 6 or 7, you're going to know this whole area. And you're going to be moved on to this area. What this is... So this is one zone. This is another zone. This is the city. So you got your bank over here. Crafting stations. When you first start out, once you get uh, one, one and a half silver, run your little booty straight up the path into town. Go here. It's I think it's called Consortium. Buy yourself Consortium uh, shirt, pants, gloves, and boots. They're going to give you better armor, no weight, and it only costs you for all of them. Like a, I think it's like 50 copper each, so it might be a little more than one one and a half silver but check it out it's good good gear you'll probably keep it until your teens before you replace it so i would say as soon as you get some money buy the armor they have other stuff in this area this is where you get your class quests there's a quest in here um, all kinds of all kinds of quests not too many quests it's not like wow there's not a quest hub in here you might have two or three guys in this area that give you a quest you know three or four quests in this town you know, a few quests up here. It's not a lot, but it's definitely... There's a lot to it where you're going to be running back and forth and going here and going back and going here and going back and going here. But this is kind of the map to get you started. This is all great area. This is These CVs are great camps to kill until like level 5 or 6. The bears are good probably up until... So if you start them at 4, 5, 6, maybe 6, maybe 7... But at that point, you can kind of go into this area and start doing the spiders at the entrance or in the CV. You can start doing the exiles at, I think, 10. Let me look at my notes real quick. I'll tell you exactly. So 1 to 5, you can solo animals. Oh. 
when you first start in here, you can pick one profession class. I would recommend, if you don't have any plans for anything, get skinning because you're going to be killing what? Rabbits, boars, bears, and deer. All of which, which you can skin and get hides and stuff like that. So if you don't really know what to do, I would get at least skinning. When you're level 6 in a profession, you can get a second. And then once you have th those 2 to 12, then you can get a third. That's how it works. Um, so 1 to like 4 or 5, you're in here soloing. Like at level 3, you can start looking for a group if you want. Uh, 5, I would say 4 to 8 or 5 to 8 is good for bears. Um, spiders, which are up here. Ish, yeah. So you can come from, this is the camp that everybody hangs out in this zone. This is where everybody's going to want to meet you, no matter where you go, probably. Um, spiders down here are level 8 to 10. Um, there's fog beasts or whatever they're called up in this area that are also like 8 to 10. Um, exiles in this camp. There's quest. You'll be coming up here for the, the apprentice quest anyway. Um, they're 10 to like 14. Uh, then you can do inside the spider caves. I think are maybe 10 to 13-ish. Something like that. They start greening out or bluing out. CV2 exiles are I think 14 plus. Uh, 13 plus maybe. At level 13, you can go up this way into the next zone, the meadows. On the far end, there's a town. Keep following the path all the way until you get to a town. And then north, just north of that town is uh, little bunnies. It's like a bunny camp, 13 to maybe like 16. And then you can do aqueducts, which is in that zone, 16 plus. Or frogs, which are like on some river. I've never done them. 18 plus is wolves, uh, 20 plus is wolf cave, and then 20 plus is dry lands. Dry lands is, so Meadowlands is up here. This is where I did my intro. I was showing you the Meadowlands, and I ran back in through here. Uh, come around here, and in this zone up here is the dry lands, so that's like 20 plus. I've not made it to the dry lands yet. I'm not that high level, so. But by the time you get through this area, you'll have a br pretty good feel of how things go. By the time you're doing like the Exiles group, you're going to have a really good feel about how other classes you're playing with are kind of rolling. Um, and then you should have a kind of a good idea of the game in general. So this is the first two zones, I guess, of the map. And I don't know how many more there are. I don't think there's many more after that. Um, I'd imagine maybe Drylands is 20 to 30. I don't know if that's it. So this would be one. If they count the town, that's two. Three, four, five. That might be the whole game. So, spoilers. I'm not sure. These little doohickeys here are little teleporter posts. There's a quest that I haven't done yet. There's another one here. That's like the only fast travel in the game. They cost a resource that you get from killing like a certain type of mob. But you got to do a quest first. So, I haven't done any of that. But once you get that, you can kind of teleport from zone to zone a little bit more. Uh, just to save yourself some time to travel. Because it can literally, to run from the end of the meadows down to town, it could take 10-15 minutes. I mean, these zones are pretty sizable. Um, it's one of the benefits of the game. The zones are pretty well done. There is no compass. If you stand at one of these points, it'll highlight with a little blue circle. So if you stand at a campfire... And look at your map, you'll be able to know which campfire it is. But other than that, you don't know where you're at when you're out here. You have to use landmarks. Like, the thing is, you can see very far away. Like, if I'm up here, I can see this tower all the way over here. If I'm here, I can see this tower up here. So you have to look around and use your landmarks. And you'll the way the map is designed is really, really well done uh, from just a, like, a situational awareness. And once you learn the map... I don't even hit my M button for map anymore. I kind of know where I'm at. Oh, the tower is on my right side. I know I'm over here. Um, oh, there's the big town over there. So I know, you know, so you kind of start getting to know everything. Uh, same with out here. This has got a big crow's head that lights up at night. So you can kind of see that from anywhere around here, right? Um, and then you got these two campfires here with a tower here. Kind of like, you know, this wall is freaking awesome this is like the wall on the north i love it i love the design of it 
So they do they do a really good job with the layout and the designs of the map um, and kind of putting focal points in there. So you kind of over time learn the map yourself and you'll kind of just know where you're at. You'll know all the little tricks and tips, just like an EverQuest. You knew where you're at over time. Um, so that's how you kind of get started. So I guess, I mean, that's kind of everything. Let me check my notes. I guess the rest of it is just like tips. I'll go, I'm going to go into the combat system. So I'll go in the game. Enough of the showing and stuff. Let's get into the game. Okay, so just real quick to kind of give you an idea of the scope of the map. I'm just showing you this vista here, right? So this is, um, that's the wall to north that I was talking about. So this is on the north side of the city. Uh, there's a little tower over there with a camp. And there's the crow head with the other camp that everybody kind of goes to. And then if you kept going up and around the other side of the area would be the exiles. And then back over straight across there in the forest is spiders up on that far wall. So just kind of you can kind of see very far uh, in this game. The maps are huge. It'll it'll take you a couple minutes to run over there. But, you know, you, you're visually it's not too impressive but you have a long range of sight so while it doesn't have like a map interface that shows you exactly where you're at you can kind of see through the landmarks as you learn them at first you'll be lost but eventually you'll get it so i just want to throw that in there all right so i'm going to fast forward this just because you know i don't want to play the whole thing it's just me being stupid as a noob just trying to test if i could jump over the fence seeing this dude was like oh let me kill this dude maybe he's a named uh, started off low stamina because I was jumping around. That was dumb of me. If you notice, I don't have a buff on my... Uh, I didn't have bread eaten. Eaten? Eaten? I haven't got the bread buff. See, I'm, I'm trying to, like, eat the bread now during the fight when I'm about to die. So that's one of the reasons why I died. Very new mistake. Make sure you have your food regen up. Uh, full stamina before you're going to fight. And I died. Now, what you'll notice is if you look at my profile up into my name you'll see an arrow when i respawn that arrow tells you where your bag is you will not have access to your inventory your bag you can't loot anything until you get your bag your bag's right there see mine's glowing you pick it up you have access to everything in your inventory again everything's good go back to the campfire sit down see how i have the penalty you gotta sit down for a little bit and it'll slowly remove your penalty so here I am. Uh, I had to jump in the game. I was using footage and maps and screenshots up to this point, but I had to kind of jump in the game to show you the rest of what I wanted to show you. So this is the town. That's the entrance to the town. This is the main path on the map here. So this is the in-game map, right? So main path heading south. Um, again, to navigate the map. I said this before, but I said I'd get into it later. If you look up there... That planetoid is always in the north. The player base jokingly calls it Blupiter because it's blue and it looks like Jupiter, I guess. Um, but that's always in the north. So you can look at your map and see which way is north. Blupiter's that way. I'm facing it, so I must be facing that way. It's kind of one of the ways you can tell to navigate. Just kind of go over that. Um, that's one point. Uh, but mostly what I wanted to show you here is the targeting system. So... It has a pretty unique targeting system. I don't know if any other game has one like this, but if I target him, he's my defensive target. I can still have him targeted. Let me see if I can find anything to kill. And I can have an offensive target. Right? So this deer is now my offensive target. So offensive target, red brackets. Defensive target, blue brackets. So as a healer, when I cast my heal spell... It'll go to him. I never have to take my target off what we're fighting. So you basically, if he was over here, I could be fighting him, just cast my heal spell, and it'll heal my defensive target. It'll heal my um, my group members or whatever. You can hit your F1, F2, F3, F4 to select your group member for defensive target. I never have to switch targets back and forth. You only have to switch your target if you want a different defensive target. Um... So that's kind of how targeting works. It's pretty unique. I like it. So it's good for buffs and such. Um, as a DPS, I really don't have to worry too much. I do have some buffs for uh, for my defensive target. 
but I really don't have to worry too much. But it's very nice for healers and stuff like that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the difficulty of mobs. So you have these little ticks here. This one's two. This bear is one. Chevrons. So they go from one to four. One is easy. You can solo it. Two is difficult. Potentially can't solo it. Or it's going to be at the high end of your abilities to solo. Usually low end group content. A three chevron, which I don't have here, is group content. Um, they're making... they. They just change it so you pretty much can't uh, solo a three chevron, even like a green three chevron. And then the color of the chevron, which is also up here, you see up here in your target, you can see the color and how many chevrons they have. The color is the difficulty, so this one's gray, meaning it's going to give me zero experience and it's not going to be too difficult. Um, it's the same standard EQ coloring system. Gray, no experience. Green, you have extremely reduced experience. Blue, 100% experience. White, even con, 100% experience. Yellow, slightly harder than you, 100% experience. Red, you actually get reduced experience. Unlike EQ, where you get like super PL uh, experience, power level experience. Here, you actually get reduced experience for fighting a red. It's kind of like a power level prevention method, right? Because you can group with a level 30, and a level 30 can kill a monster, and you'll get full experience for it. It doesn't matter what his level is. It matters what your level is versus um, versus uh, what the kill is. So, you know, you can group with higher level people and pretty much get power level that way. But they're not slaughter. They're, they're helping you, but they're not slaughtering mobs. Like, it would still take me some effort to kill this guy. Uh, so that's the Chevron difficulty system. So again, gray to green. Uh, you don't want to fight greens. You want to fight blues, whites, or yellows. That's the rule. Don't ever fight anything other than blues, whites, or yellows. Greens, too low, give you ex massively nerfed experience. Reds, too high. I think they also do They ignore 50% armor, so they're going to slaughter you as well. But... Even if you have a higher level killing them, you're going to get massively nerfed experience for red. So, uh, blues, whites, yellows is what you want to kill. Solo, single chevrons, if you know what you're doing, maybe a double chevron. Three plus is group. Uh, four is like raid content or hard group content. Um, the other thing I wanted to go into, let's make this guy my target, is the flanking system. So, if I go into my inventory, see my bracers have plus two flanking. Um, so I have, does it even say it in here? Flanking. So I have plus eight. I think that gives me damage, like a straight damage bonus to my weapon roll, um, based on the flank. And each weapon has different flanking. So if you see the positional bonus on my dagger, says 15 penetration if I hit it from the side. And 35 penetration if you hit it from the back. Mm, come here, dear. So anyway, um, you got to look at your weapon type. So swords are generally... Forged, so swords will have... I don't know if I have a sword on me. Let me see. I have a great sword, which is a side flank. My daggers are rear and side. My hatchet is rear and side. Ah, there we go. So my tin sword is when I'm forward facing, it gives me plus 15 hit. Um, I think the general consensus, you could check the forum, somebody did some math on it. Damage is better than hit. Pen is better than hit. Uh, pen, if, if it's low, if it's high armor, like 50% armor or greater or something like that, penetration is better than damage. Penetration helps you get through their armor. But generally, damage is better than penetration. Penetration is better than uh, hit. And penetration is only better than damage if it's a high uh, armored target. So how can you tell what's going on? Is They have these little arrows uh, that tell you where it's at. The color isn't as meaningful. Like, I thought blue meant that was the best position. But it's just kind of just telling you, like, that's the rear, that's the side, that's the front, right? And it's just giving you... So you, you have to know what you want based on your weapon. So if I'm using my dagger in a group setting, I want to be behind him for the 35 penetration, right? So that's going to that's gonna, 
I'm going to be hitting harder from behind him. If I'm using my sword, swords, if you're tanking, like if I'm soloing and they're going to be forward facing me, I'm going to want to use a sword over a dagger just for the extra hit. Unless my dagger is just so much more powerful than my sword. It really depends. Like, obviously you want to go for the better weapon more than the positional. But the position system system is interesting. I like it. I usually don't like positioning systems. They get on my nerves in games, but this one's this one's not bad. Um it's pretty good actually. I think it's pretty enjoyable. And it's weapon dependent and all that stuff. So that's kinda how the positioning system works. You wanna and you can kinda see it here in the arrow what's going on. Oh I didn't even notice it has a little has a little directional finder, so if you have it targeted, you can you know which direct where it's at. I never even noticed that before. There's just a lot of little things. Um, all right, what else? Uh, so that's combat. Just the directional. I covered chevrons, the con system. Um, oh, here's your level. Here's something a lot of people don't know. So I'm level 16 uh, as a striker. Um, if you click on this little circle here, right click. You can track my foresting, so I'm a level 13 forester, and you have an experience bar for your foresting. If I right click, I can do hunter, so my skinning, I'm level 6 hunter, and you can track that. So you can flip flop between your different, uh, what you want to track as far as your experience goes. That's another little tip. Let me think what else, what else have I got? Oh, back to the targeting, sorry. So when you have a defensive target, so you could target your tank, and I don't have that, but I just showed you what it was. If you hit F, that's assist. So it'll assist whatever your defensive target is. Um, uh, I think I mentioned before that rares in this game are like EverQuest. So in an area like this, it's not going to be like this guy has a name that can pop up. It'll be like any of these guys have a chance for a name. And I think the named in this area would be like a frenzied animal. I think also as you walk through, you might see like named bears and named deer and stuff like that. So keep your eye out for potential named animals as you're walking through. Let me use my run speed buff here. Here, let me show you the difference. Talk about warden. That's how fast the warden runs. Run speed buff is coming on. And that's the difference. So a little, little helps a little bit. And these zones are pretty, pretty big. Um, so what else? Let me see. Um, so right away, I covered what you should do. Right away, just solo. Kill deer. Uh, kill these boar, I call them schultz or whatever, pigs. Deer, these young bucks, are gonna can potentially drop weapons and armor and stuff like that. Uh, so you definitely want to kill them if you're not working on anything else. Find a group. You have the social option for groups, so you go up here, hit social, right? You can have your friends list, guilds, your group. Um, you want to look for a group, you hit looking for group. Now I'm looking for group. I'm a striker. I can add different tag tags to it. Like, let's say you got alts or something. I don't know. Uh, let's see. If you want to hunt, you want a dungeon. I want to only group in the Meadowlands and Northren. You can hit OK. But in general, you just... Most people don't even do that. Most people just striker, boom, or whatever. And then you can see who's looking for group. And now you're on the looking for group list. And you can sort this by only single players looking for group. You can sort this by groups looking for players or, you know, active groups with spots in them. There's a one to five group. You can sort it out by level. That kind of stuff. Uh, peers online, off way, do not disturb anonymous. Interesting. Um... What else is there on my list that I want to talk about? Um, do 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 do. Uh, quests again, not a lot of them, but they keep you busy. I still haven't done a lot of my quests. Shows you all my complete. Like this is literally been playing this for two weeks on this character. Probably got the level sixteen. These are all the quests I've completed, and I still have all these to do. So as you can see, not a lot of quests. But they're pretty involved to get them done. I spent a lot of my... I did uh, Missing Apprentice, Arms Race, Making a Map, um, this Tower one. I think this was the one where we had to kill the bear. Where was the one we had to kill the bear? And then I stopped doing quests. I just started focusing on leveling up. But the quest logs here, it gives you... doesn't tell you exactly what to do. 
uh, like I won't tell you where she's at, but it has pretty good descriptions. Like you don't ever, you're not, it has everything you need to know pretty much in here. If you don't read the text or you skip through it, all the basic details are going to be in there. You're not going to really miss much. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, when you get knocked out, when you die, you're never dead. Let's see. Let me see if I can assist him. Do you got anything targeted? F. No, he doesn't. Pedro got anything targeted? No. Um, when you die, you're not dead. You have like a hundred and some odd seconds. Somebody could just heal you. That's all it takes is a heal. So a healer could just cast a heal on you and you pop right back up. You're knocked out. You're unconscious. You don't die until you release or that timer runs out. So don't release right away if you're in a group and you die. Um, they can still just heal you. Also, everybody should have these smelling salts. So for a melee class or melee class that doesn't have heals, you can have these salts that will revive them with a little bit of health. Like a very tiny bit of health and then they can kind of met up. So you're not fully wiped unless everybody's dead. If one person can run away, leash the mobs and then come back and start getting people up then you know you'll save the group so i kind of like that it was very nice oh is that one oh thought i seen a butterfly i was gonna grab that instead of having to put footage in for the butterfly um see you you'll be on the lookout for these campfires these are ember fires you can see them in a distance all right let's see when i can start seeing the smoke signal see that smoke signal going up that's how you know it's not just a normal one, it's an ember one. You can sit down and you can rest at it. Usually these ember campfires also have a respawn point near it, which are like usually like a red glowy thing like that indicates there's a respawn there. So that's where you're going to respawn. And then you can met up here. Um, at nighttime, it is very dark in this game. You will need a lantern. You start out with a torch. You can spend 10 silver and get this whiter, brighter lantern. Um... It is brighter. It casts light farther. Uh, what is she, level 4 killing the runner that killed me? Uh, it, uh, it's it's not just whiter, it's brighter and casts the light farther. I'll throw a clip in here later showing you that. I compared I compared the two. Um, let's see. Went over bags drop using arrows to find. Uh, don't want to get into crafting just yet. I'll do lanterns later. Did the con system. Oh, bank slots. So you have a bank at the... You'll have a bank here, I think. Maybe one here. This is where you can look at your first bank thing. Um, the I think you have one slot. It costs one silver. You open up another slot. It costs ten silver. You open up another slot. Fifty silver. Another slot. A gold. Then in the town up here in the bank, there's actually a shared stash. It comes with like one slot, which is like five or six slots. You can upgrade it with one silver, and then the next one's 50 silver. Um, but that's nice for like trading gear between your alts. Like for example, this guy's ready to trade all this stuff to my alt as soon as it hits level 10. I'm just going to dump all this stuff on him through the, uh, through the trade slot. But overall... Um, yeah, the people people are constantly asking about classes. Do I want to be a warden? Do I want to be wardens are very popular, brigands are very popular, berserkers are pretty popular. I think they I think berserkers just lack the panaz of the warden, the panaz of the brigand CC. But I think they're all good. Um, do, 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 people are very helpful in chat if you read. Um, very good community. Uh, so, sorry, where was that? Some bank slots. Um, we went through the apprentice quest. Frenzied animals are rare. Keep an eye out for them. Oh, hold mouse over skills. So if you hit J, you can see your skills, right? So here's my stri here's my striker level. If I was to ever re-roll to one of these other classes, it would revert back to 6. See how it's grayed out before that? But my striker level would stay the same. So I could still use any weapon or armor on my base level. I guess it's called. I guess, so. I guess this is base, and this is specialization. But if you hold your mouse over this, it tells you what all the details of the ability, right? But if you hit Alt, 
it tells you what the next level when it upgrades each time. So eventually somebody will collect all this data and have every step of the way for all the all the things, but it only shows you one level. You can't go any further. You can't go to the max. So if I want to see what Venom Strike is now versus what Venom Strike, I get it next tier 18. This one never gets any higher, just stays at 15%. So just a little tip for that. Firefly buffs, I got a video clip I'm going to throw in. Crafting experience I need to talk to you about. I got a little clip to throw in. Uh, stats is what I need to do. Um, again, I'm not 100% on a lot of these stats, but I'll kind of try to break it down as best I can here. So for your armor class, I have 84 armor. As your gear wears down, as you take deaths, as you fight, it'll slowly start wearing down. As it wears down, it reduces your armor, so keep that in mind. I don't know if it reduces the stats as well. Movement. You can just mouse over this stuff and it'll tell you. It modifies your movement speed while not in combat stance. So I have my buff up, I got a plus 15 movement. My combat movement is plus 5, meaning when I get into combat, when I'm like this... Oh, wrong button. When I'm like, what's, what is that, this? When I'm like this, let me get into the light. And I got my sewers out. That combat, that reduced speed for me is increased by five. So I'm a little bit faster than normal. That just comes from buff buffs on my gear and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think it's super need, needful, but it's nice for maneuvering around and getting on the correct flank and stuff. Just making it a little more maneuverable. Haste affects everything. Um... It affects, I think it's a raw percentage based on, uh, let me think how it was, what, it, what was haste. So if you have 10 haste, if you have 100 haste, I honestly, I used to know it, it slipped out of my head, but I don't think plus 2 haste means 2% haste. I think it depends on the, the, the ability, like the length of the ability or something like that i forget i can't think of it right now so sorry about that but haste uh works on your spells so your abilities are faster plus your auto attack it works on both of them so very important stat safe fall you do take damage from falling in this game um so i guess that's a way of reducing that health regen isn't doesn't mean i regen 15 health it means i regen my my base health regen of for whatever i have is 15% more powerful. Stamina regen, I think... I don't I don't know if this is percent based or that just means I do 2 regen. I think it might be 2% faster. Healing, same thing. Healing bonus, I think it's a percentage. I'm not a expert on these as far as percentages. You know, I'm still trying to figure that stuff out myself. Um, resilience, prevents you from dying... Uh, avoid chance of avoiding incoming attacks. So it's like yeah, you know, your avoidance block uh, chance of blocking attack parry chance of parrying. Um, these are the primary offenses for me. So hit is critical, landing a glancing heavy or critical blow. Penetration is like armor ignore, very important. Flanking, I think, is um, I think that's a direct damage bonus. I think I could be wrong about that, but that's it's important. Your flank, everybody's like, get flanking, get flanking. So I'm assuming that's a direct damage bonus, and it works on any flanking position. So not only from the side or from the back, from the front as well. If you're if you have, see how it says plus eight. Oh, that's what it is. It gives me a plus eight to the bonus. It's not damage. So if I'm hitting from the back with the sword, it's not plus three damage. It's plus eight damage. That's a huge increase. It's not 15. It's 15 plus eight hit. It's 10 plus eight pen. So that goes directly into the flanking. Um, if you look up on the top here, it says plus five one hand weapon damage. That means it gives me plus five plus five percent to one-handed damage it doesn't mean it gives me plus five damage it just gives me so like if i hit for a hundred for whatever let's say my weapon rolled and i hit a hundred it would give me 105 is because it gives me another five percent so helpful but not like super super op uh what else one hand weapons obviously damage output 
I get a bonus to, uh, per I think it's a percentage. Like, it says plus, but I think it's a percentage to all the different weapons, resists. Uh, I'm not too sure on resists. I think it, imagine it would just be... Uh, modifies the duration. Uh, so that's like the duration of movement debuffs. I think that comes from my belt. From a quest item. Uh, what do I got? My hands? My hands are haste. Oh, my boots give me movement resists. Uh, so that's basically stats. Your go harvesting stuff goes here. Your lantern goes here. Um, you have two. You have a primary and a secondary, which I don't know. Why do I have that like that? Can I switch these? Why is my way? I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh. I can't do it while I'm in combat stance. Why would my bow be in primary? Um, but you can swap that out in an instance. So I have my melee on, my melee on. I can go to my swords or to my bow almost instantly. Like, you can just do that. But if you notice, there's a two second cooldown on your abilities when you swap, just to prevent you from instantly using the abilities and stuff. Um,. What else? So, th so these are your ability slots down here. These four are for your consumables. So potions, food, your uh, smelling salts. These four are for your little buff components. So as you can see, Mild Venom works for Wardens. At level 8, it'll give me a plus 3 damage mod and a plus 1 over time mod if you have that checked. See how it tells me in this ability? It says I have 200... 41 charges because I have that checked now so that ability will now have a plus three mod on it um, so very very useful definitely for soloing these help um, but you can get a good amount of these if you can get a large amount of these and just keep it on that'd be great they drop from monsters I don't know if they can be crafted or not um, let me see what else social bag slots I don't know if there's any way to increase that you have a gathering bag for your gathering materials just by default goes into here um, that's inventory got your skills went through that recipes for crafting I'll, I'll, I'm not, not too big on crafting I'll get into that um, I don't know a lot I just know it's very complex but I'll get into that in a second your map your social notifications ah settings that's what I want to do uh, here's what I have if you want to imitate what I have um, oops this is what I have for everything here um, keybinds graphics is what I wanted right so I have this set to my monitors resolution and refresh rate I got it down on potato I have medium medium low I this seems to be important a lot of people recommended lock it at 30 if you're roughly around 30 it helps um, I put my view distance down to 40 I can see everything I don't think there's much of a need maybe another zone maybe you need to bump it to 50 or 60 but it defaults to 100 you don't need it shadows off reflections off um, all that stuff shadow distance i turned all that down just to kind of help it that it helps me maintain the uh the 30 frames per second right because it's not a very optimized game it doesn't oh is that a firefly i could shake ah it's a person I'm just trying to save me from having to having to edit the other clip I got. Um, but um, shoot, what was I saying? It just saves it, it. Even if you have a potato like mine, an old like I got a 1060 and an i5 processor, right? But um, I'm using 50% of my CPU while I'm recording, and I'm using 75% of my GPU. I'm also recording right now. So I don't think, I think even if you have a um, high-end computer, people are still getting 30. I think some people have super high-end computers might get more, but it's just it's just a game. It's something you got to deal with. It's one of the cons, you know, is this a great looking game? It's an okay looking game. I think it's vast. I like the expansiveness of, expansiveness of the zones. All right, so let me uh, let me pop off and find out what clip I want to do. Maybe I'll do the craft. I'll do torches since it's nighttime. Uh, let me find a torch uh, comparison clip that I got, and we'll throw that in next. All right, so I just had bought a lantern. It costs 10 silver. So this is the lantern. Very bright light, very white light, less warm. Um, but if you look, look at the walls. You can see the torch. 
you can see the lantern. A lot of people say, no, no, the lantern is only white light. No, it throws light farther. So when you're in a dungeon, it's going to light the area up more. But quite honestly, I like the torch better. I bought the lantern because it casts more light. But man, it's so bright. Like, look at that bright. Sh when you're in a dark cavern, it almost hurts your eyes. It's so bright. So I actually prefer the torch. But it's up to you. If you want more light, 10 silver, that's all it costs. There's the difference. Okay, so another type of light are these little fireflies, will-o'-wisps. You see it up there? When it's night, look for them. What you want to do is if you see a red one, it's going to give you some type of damage bonus or damage shield. But you would just want to run up to it and step on it. That's it. That's all you got to do. And it'll give you a buff. Like, look at my buff bar down there. Want to step on it. Boing! Now I got a buff. This one was plus 15 damage. Some of them are damage bonuses. It lasts for 30 seconds. It's very helpful when you're low level. All right, so crafting. Just wanted to show you something that I didn't know. Gathering the crafting materials, harvesting it gives you XP. But then when you process it, like here, look at how much my XP is going up. It's just rocketing up. Forget about the guy jumping up and down. He's excited about something. Everybody's excited about this game. I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, I, I didn't know this. I held on to my crafting materials. I even tried to sell them. Uh, I didn't realize that when you process them, you got so much XP. Because it was, like, really hard to get them leveled up. And then once I realized this, I blew through all of them, all the materials, and processed it up. So, uh, crafting is very intense. Let me show you uh, a spreadsheet just to kind of show you how intense it is into the good old web browser for some spreadsheet love so a dude on discord named hall funk uh posted an image which i asked him i was like i was like what is that image is that how complex this is so he was making just a single imbued copper greatsword right so you have a blade a guard a grip a grip wrap and a flux flux is a rare drop that everybody seeks drops only from animals it's worth a little bit of money it's needed in crafting the rest of the stuff is um, harvested. You can buy this stuff from vendor, but from what I heard with crafting, I've done much crafting myself. If you buy vendor materials to craft, you get less experience. The quality isn't as good. The general rule of thumb is, uh, from what I've heard, is always use gathered materials to do your crafting. Uh, it'll, it'll give you more experience. It'll be worth more. But to give you an example, like, look at all these combinations, right? So he just, some of the form, formulas are messed up here. But he just basically did all the all kinds of different variables, variations to kind of see, you know, what with different fluxes and stuff like that. So the best, the 2D7 plus 6 with the highest, uh, highest DPS was a tin, cedar, light with a thick flux. He did... You know, next one would be if you use copper for the guard. But each one of these is a different way you can potentially craft an imbued copper greatsword. So not all imbued copper greatswords are the same. You get a cheesy crafted one with just copper, pine, and a lean. I guess this is a hide. You're going to get a 1d7 plus 3 versus a 2d7, which is like double, that's double damage. That's basically double damage. So low end with gathered materials high end is going to be double damage right so good opportunity for twinking here a lot of variation a lot of complexity you know you also have different uh, combat move stats different hit stats different penetration so if you wanted you know if you're willing to sacrifice one point of damage off here but you wanted a little bit more penetration then you would want to go with you know copper tin tin lean thick so he posted this just kind of like showing her, and I, my reply to him was like, oh my god, I didn't, I didn't realize it was that intense. And his reply was, he chose one of the harder recipes. Uh, there are five components, one of which is based on the name of the recipe, the blade, which is four that can be of various types. The guard can be of any metal, so T1 through T5. The grip can be any metal or wood, T1 through T5. Uh, T1 means basically 1 through 10. T2 is... 11 through 20, you know, every 10 levels basically is a tier, 10 through 50. Um, flux is T1 through T5. He's like, so eventually 
we have 5 times 10 times 10 times 5, 2,500 different possible ways to make a single imbued copper greatsword. <laughs> Keep in mind that there are four different recipes, which after the first component. So 5 times 2,500 equals 12,500 different imbued greatswords in the game in total. That could be crafted. So that's how complex, way too complex for me. But if you're a crafter and you like this kind of stuff, uh, yeah, uh, definitely, definitely a thing. So um, I don't know much else about crafting as far as that. I do know name drops, like rare name rares, tend to be a little bit better quality than the highest crafting quality. So crafting's meant to be like a fill, uh, you know, a filler until you can get a rare name dropped or buy one from somebody um i think they have other things in crafting that don't drop that make it more valuable and keep it sustainable in the market but you know it's a new game everybody's trying to figure this stuff out right now but i just wanted to show you this crazy spreadsheet with his comment to kind of give an example of just how intense crafting can be um so if you're a crafter you might like this game so just want to throw a clip in here, kind of showing you we're together. This Dabu guy is an uh, experienced tank. We're all low levels, but he's obviously an alt. He know we're farming for rares, and we find one giant heart spider. Definitely a call back to EQ. Um, he drops a chitin shell armor. I always want to pronounce it chitin shell armor. Um, but the... Chitin shell, chitin shell armor drops from a giant heart spider and upper guck. But you can see it's like awesome loot, for especially for low level. It's like 98 AC. My level like 16 warden or whatever has like 74. This one piece outweighs what my dude has. Um, so definitely fun eq loot. So in game we have a guy that plays, his name is Satan. Uh, <laughs> so... Just chilling, and I see Jesus just taking a stroll and and praising things and just walking the lands. Just funny. Just absolutely hysterical that he came to counter a dude named Satan that's in chat all the time. <laughs> Somebody just playing around, being funny. Uh, just walk through the whole zone as Jesus, nice and slow. Absolutely hysterical. So anyway, he's definitely a rare mob. Definitely in today's world. We need a little more Jesus. Everybody needs a little more Jesus. So here we have another uh, rare Drip Fang, which drops a really nice dagger that I lost the roll on. Broke my heart for the next few levels. So was that Dripping Spider Fang? Very nice dagger. I wish I would have won that level 10. Uh, but we, did, we didn't know this rare was even here. We just kind of stumbled upon it. That dagger dropped. I've never seen it again. This was in CV2 Spider Side. Alright, so I think that about sums up the game. I'm going to close this out with our defeat of the Ancient Bear. Well, I'm not close it out just yet, but this is where we finished Ancient Bear after hours of grouping together and joking around and having fun. We finally got the quest done. We were all ecstatic, we could now go to bed. But this was a real turning point for me in the game. Level 1, level 2, level 3 even, I was really thinking like, ugh, the performance is bad, the combat is sluggish. You know, it's difficult to learn all these new mechanics. And I was really thinking about a refund. And a dude came around and started helping me with quests. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing, he was just leading me around. We went into some of the CVs and did the weapons cash quests, which you'll do, you'll figure that out. And led me into this quest, which then led me into this bear group, which then led me into farming bears. Uh, we did an attempt and we wiped, got back together, grouped for hours, had a good time. And this really opened my eyes, like, yes, this is a social game. And I wondered, like, will this be a social game? Will there be grouping? I'm telling you, even, like, I mean, one morning, one Saturday morning where I got up at 8 o'clock in the morning, I couldn't find a group for a few hours. Logged off, got something to eat, came back, boom, I was grouping all day. So, like, I all like, it doesn't take long to find a group. I usually just gather or solo or something like that until I find a group, but it's usually not too long before somebody's putting something together. And that's without me putting the group together. I put zero effort into making groups a lot of times. 
and I still get groups up. That's that's great. That was one thing I was worried about. Um, yes, I mean, my advice to you, if, if the things I'm saying in this video check the boxes for you, and you're on the fence, my recommendation would be give it a shot. It's 40 bucks. What do you got to lose? Give it to level 10. See if you fall in love with it. If not, whatever. Take off. See if you can get a refund. Whatever. If this doesn't seem like it's something for you, a PvE co-op type social game, uh, you want something more like WoW or Guild Wars or what's already out there, by all means, don't buy it. You know, um, It's really a subjective thing. And I can tell you I like it, but you might not like it. But hopefully I've done a good job showing kind of what's going on, some tips and tricks to get you started, a little bit of a guide. Um, I've been trying to capture this footage since I've been playing. Really spent all night working on this, compiling it. I'm exhausted. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with this. Um, where we were fighting the bear the first time. And we had it. And we wiped. But I'll just leave the video here. I'll let it play out. I appreciate you guys watching. If you're still watching to the end of this, it's probably about two hours by now. Um, appreciate you. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Comments. Uh, you know, if, if, if you like niche games like this, check out. I got a six hours, seven days to die video. I got some TLP videos. Got tons of guide videos out there. Um, if you're looking for some unique games that you might like, check out my channel, check out my playlists. Um, and yeah, I'll be playing this for a while. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate you. Bye.